Good, good afternoon and welcome. By authorization of the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System and the Colorado State University faculty, I declare the 127th commencement of the Warner College of Natural Resources and the 140th commencement of Colorado State University to be in session.
To begin our ceremony, please stand and join Ms. Michaela Fitzpatrick from the School of Music, Theater, and Dance in singing our national anthem. seated. As a land-grant institution, Colorado State University honors the indigenous inhabitants of this land by reading our university land acknowledgement to open this event. Our college recognizes the importance of not only the land acknowledgement, but also of raising awareness of the current day contributions of indigenous people in how we teach and research natural resources challenges. Given that, we must strive to provide a voice for everyone impacted by natural resource policies, ensuring multiple perspectives are considered in decisions that affect our environment. To that end, we view the CSU land acknowledgement as a reminder and a call for action for the work that still needs to be done in these spaces within the natural resource industry. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other native tribes. We recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all the relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land-grant institution, and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion. And significantly, that our founding came at a dire cost to Native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, responsibility, and commitment. Now I'd like to introduce our platform party. As I introduce each person, I will ask them to rise and remain standing through the introductions. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Rocky Coleman, Master Instructor, Department of Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. Dr. Rich Conant, Head, Department of Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Dr. Catherine Stoner, Head, Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Dr. Linda Nagel, Head, Department of Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. Dr. Tara Teal, Professor, Department of Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Dr. Chris Myrick, Professor, Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Dr. Ricky Frierson, Director of Diversity and Inclusion, Warner College of Natural Resources. Rob Novak, alumnus and Warner College Director of Communications. 
Logan Rowley, graduating senior, Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Tillman, Professor of Military Science, Colorado State University Army ROTC. Dr. Mary Pedersen, Provost and Executive Vice President. Dr. John P. Hayes, Dean, Warner College of Natural Resources. Let us recognize this group. Please take this moment to help me recognize our soloist, Ms. Michaela Fitzpatrick, and our quintet, Big Thompson Brass. At this time, I would like to invite Dean Hayes to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Rocco. Provost Pedersen, members of the platform party, distinguished faculty members, esteemed guests, and of course, our awesome students graduating today. Welcome. I'm John Hayes, Dean of the Warner College of Natural Resources, and it is my honor and great pleasure to welcome you to the Warner College of Natural Resources commencement ceremony. Wow, it's so wonderful to be here with you all today. Commencement is one of my favorite days of the year, and it's been almost exactly two years since the last time I spoke in front of a great group of graduating students. At times, those two years felt like an eternity. It's been a tough couple of years, and I'm, while I don't pretend to know the challenges that each of you have faced during that time, I know it's been tough for everyone, and for some of you, I know that the challenges faced have been especially hard. I hope that you're doing as well as possible in the face of those challenges. I am so proud to be standing in front of this amazing group of students who are moving along their journeys to become the next generation of natural resources leaders and who are about to become the most recent graduates of Colorado State University. Each of you graduating today traveled down your own unique path to arrive at CSU, and in many ways, you also took your own unique path through your degree program. Some of you came here straight from high school. Others of you transferred in from community colleges or other universities. Some of you served in the military before coming to CSU to get your college degree. One out of every 17 students in Warner College are veterans, the highest percentage of any college at CSU. Some of you joined us from families whose parents and grandparents attended CSU, and some of you are the first in your, in your family to attend college. Roughly a quarter of the students in Warner College are the first in their families to attend college. The journey taken, the journey taken by our first generation students is a transformational one for themselves and often for their families and communities as well. I would welcome our first generation students and their families and friends and first generation faculty, staff, and alums to stand and be recognized for your accomplishment. Some of you grew up in Fort Collins and others joined from across the state and across the country. And some of you traveled from other countries to come to the United States to pursue your education here at CSU. But each of you, regardless of the path you took to get here, share one important thing in common. You're about to take your place alongside a long line of leaders who've come through CSU and gone on to shape the world and its natural resource professions. That line of leaders extends back 117 years when the first classes in natural resources were taught at CSU during the dawn of America's conservation movement in 1904. 
117 years ago. That was a long time ago. Teddy Roosevelt was president. The Wright brothers had just flown the first airplane. Crayons, ice cream cones, and cotton candy had just been invented. Women didn't have the right to vote, and the total population of Colorado was about the same as the population of Fort Collins today. An awful lot's changed since 1904, but one thing hasn't changed. Today, as was the case 117 years ago, CSU serves as a beacon to a dedicated group of students who come through Fort Collins to educate themselves about natural resources, to hone the skills that they'll use for the rest of their lives, and to go on to make important impacts in the state, the country, and across the planet. So as you think about today, most of you probably call this ceremony graduation. And many of you think about today as the end point of the undergraduate experience. Time to look back and celebrate the accomplishments you've made during your time here at CSU. But we don't call this ceremony graduation, we call it commencement. Commencement is not an end point or a closure, but a beginning and a start. And that really is what today is all about. Certainly we're here to recognize the successes and all the tremendous achievements that our graduates made during their time, time at CSU. But more importantly, we're here to bear witness to the turning of a page and the commencement of a new chapter of life, to the opening of a new door and to the opportunities that a college education enables. For the graduates here today and for many of the rest of you as well, Today will forever serve as a marker in time. Today is one of those handful of very special moments that are defining points on life's timeline. From here on out, many of the things that happen will forever be described as happen having occurred before this day or after this day. And parts of today will be engraved forever in your memory the ways that yesterday, in ways that yesterday and tomorrow are not. It is indeed a special day. Our students graduating today have worked long and hard to arrive at this point, but as they well know, the path taken to arrive at this ceremony was not a solitary one. And there was a community that stood beside our graduates as they traveled along their journey. So in closing my introductory remarks, remarks there are three very important groups that have been especially instrumental in that journey that I'd like to recognize today. The first is your fellow students in Warner College who shared the journey with you, stressed over exams with you, learned beside you, and traveled through all your adventures here at CSU. Many of the people moved from being strangers to being friends and colleagues. Indeed, some of those former strangers will be your closest friends and colleagues for the rest of your lives. Graduating students, I invite you to tell the friends sitting beside you thanks and to give them a fist bump or a high five. The, the second group that I'd like to recognize is the amazing faculty and staff here at CSU. A world-class group of scientists, educators, and committed individuals who've shared their knowledge and their time to help our students achieve their potential. Would the faculty and staff please stand so that we can recognize and thank you for all you've done for our students. And the third group, the third group is perhaps the most important group. The parents and spouses, friends and siblings, and community of people who lent a helping hand when it was needed, who offered a pat on the back when good graves were achieved and projects were finished, who included our students on their cell phone payment plans, <laughs> and who gave encouragement and hope on days when it was needed to smooth the path to the finish line. 
With the family and friends of our graduates, please stand and be recognized so that we can thank you for everything that you have done. So at this time, I'd like to invite Associate Dean Monique Rocca back to the podium and lead today's ceremony. At this, at this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Logan Rowley, graduating senior, Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology, who will give our graduating senior address. Happy graduation to all those guests, friends, family, Warner College staff, faculty, and the excellent graduating seniors in attendance. I am honored to be addressing all of you at this momentous ceremony. As I am sure you all do, I have many people to thank for where I am today. But with sparing words, I would like to thank my mom, dad, and sister for all their love and support in my lifetime. In the past three to five years, we, the students of Warner College, have experienced a lot of change. Whether it be the excellent addition to the Michael Smith Natural Resources Building, the momentous fires which transformed the Poudre Canyon and threatened our beloved Mount Campus, or the complete upheaval of our daily lives, classes, and ways of learning thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. Sorry, I had to at least mention it. But no matter the triumphs and challenges we have embraced, this change, we persevered through it and built strong communities along the way. In our courses, no matter the major, we have learned the lessons of change repeatedly. Change, transformation, metamorphosis, or whatever you call it, is a core tenet of the field we have all chosen and pursued. It is the keystone of the concepts of continental drift, evolution, natural and anthropogenic disturbances, succession, and many more. Our intimate understanding of change has prepared us well to overcome and adapt to the challenges we have encountered these past few years. That is most evident by our attendance here today. Enduring these changes in academic challenges has fostered a unique and powerful community within Warner. A walk around the Natural Resources Building, and you can always find a familiar face or two among the plants and cool rocks. Knighted from the start by our passion and curiosity for the natural world, it has been easy to find people we can relate to and explore the world with. This has made it easy for myself to befriend many of my Warner classmates, including those in majors different from my own. While the trials and changes we have faced might have tested our abilities to persevere, we have been able to rely on our constructed communities to support us and give us strength. In fact, this has only been re reinforced our relationships and allowed us to build our communities closer. I remember my time at Mound Campus, where there was a classic May blizzard the first week we were there, and the biting cold of our two tiny room cabins while we tried to memorize scientific names. What particularly strikes me about that week was how many people I met and befriended just from trying to stay warm and light the fires in our cabin's wood stoves. From that experience, I made many friends who I'm proud to say are also graduating here today. As many of us have reunited on campus this past semester, we've been reminded of how strong our Warner community is today and will continue to be in the future. Ultimately, the change we have experienced in our time here rarely made life or school easier, but we have persevered as a community in our graduating this semester. So remember the change we faced the communities we built, and the different ways we made it through because the world and the professions of natural resources are not stagnant. We will face much change in our future careers and lives. As we gain more experience, the power we gain will demand more and more responsibility from each of us. The adjustments we will have to make and lessons we will learn are nowhere near finished, but there is no reason to fear. We have all learned about how seamless the nature of change can be and how to respond. 
The friends we have made here might be competition in our future professions, but I challenge you to think of, of them as collaborators instead. Remember the challenges we have faced and how we have been supported along the way. As long as we remember what we have learned here and the relationships we have formed, we will be able to persevere through this dynamic life. Thank you. Thank you, Logan, for that wonderful address. Well delivered. Now I invite Dr. Chris Myrick, professor in the Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology, to come forward to recognize our university honors students and honors society initiates. All right. So the candidates for a university honors scholar and discipline honors scholars must complete a program of academic excellence, which includes honors seminars, honors courses in the major, and a senior's honors thesis while achieving at least a 3.5 cumulative grade point average. These scholar candidates are wearing green regalia and those with gold cords are also candidates for graduation with Latin distinction. This semester, we have eight graduates from the university honors program. Will you please stand and remain standing as your name is called? From the Department of Fish, Wildlife and Conservation Biology, Bethany Dykeson, Jillian Krynock, Megan Lems, and Logan Rowley. <laughs> From the Department of Ecosystem Science and Sustainability, Sonali Chokshi, Emily Jenkins, and Faith Kelly. And from the Department of Forest and Rangeland Stewardship, Brady McGron. Congratulations. Now we will recognize our candidates of distinction for fall 2021. These candidates, or these graduates, symbolize the academic achievements of approximately the upper 10% of today's degree recipients. Under the policy of the Faculty Council, candidates for distinction are determined as follows. Those with a designation of summa cum laude constitute approximately the top 1% of the class. Those designated magna cum laude constitute approximately the next 3% of the class. Those designated cum laude constitute approximately the next 6% of the class. The students who have been nominated to these distinctions are wearing gold robes, or green robes with gold cords and will be identified separately as they receive their diplomas. Please stand now as a group and be recognized. <laughs> Additionally, scholastic achievement and professional potential are recognized by various national honor societies. Select members of the 2021 graduating class have been recognized for their achievements through initiation into Xi Sigma Pi. Xi Sigma Pi is the National Honor Society which recognizes students in forestry and all natural resource areas, students who have maintained excellent academic records and who exhibit outstanding potential for success in their specific professional areas are invited to membership. You will recognize these graduates by their green, white, and gold stoles. With the initiates of Xi Sigma Pi, Please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Our masters and PhD can graduates officially received their degrees yesterday in a separate ceremony. However, we want to say a special congratulations to those graduates. At this time, I would like to invite Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Tillman, Professor of Military Science of Colorado State University Army ROTC to the podium to recognize our commissioned graduate.
On behalf of the Army Reserve Officer Training Corps RAM Battalion here at Colorado State, I am deeply honored to share in your commencement ceremony today. I would like to extend my congratulations to all of the graduates of the Warner College of Natural Resource on your outstanding accomplishments and wish each of you the best in your future endeavors. I am especially honored to be able to introduce one of our nation's newest military officers. Yesterday morning, he took an oath to protect and defend our nation as, a, as he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you Second Lieutenant Colby Struckman. <laughs> Lieutenant Struckman will serve as an Army aviator. His service will begin at flight school at Fort Rucker, Alabama. At this time, I would also like to have all who have served our nation or are currently serving our nation that are graduates today to also stand to be recognized. <laughs> to our new lieutenant and our veterans, again, congratulations on your accomplishments and best of luck as you continue your career. At this time, I'd like to invite, I'm sorry, that's you. <laughs> now will provost, excuse me, now will provost and executive vice, vice president, Dr. Mary Pedersen, please come forward to share remarks for the college and confer the degree. Thank you so much, Dr. Roca. Well, congratulations, Warner College students and welcome family and loved ones. It's wonderful to be here with you today and share this important life celebration. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge for the second time the outstanding faculty and staff who have supported your success because sometimes I feel like we really don't give them the appreciation that they need. They work long hours hard hours, they make themselves available for you all throughout the semester. So could we give them and their compassionate, strong leader, Dean John Hayes, just another round of applause, please. <laughs> so graduates, I would like to share with you three pieces of advice, three small pieces won't take too long for my charge. And I want to let you know that these are three pieces of wisdom, really, that I have passed along to my five daughters. So my youngest who graduated just a couple years ago. And these are pieces of advice that I continue to share with them as they are on their journey, finding their way post their graduation commencement. The first is foremost, Follow your passions and be courageous. No matter what you do, find what that passion is, first of all. And I know some of you know what that passion is and some of you may not know what that is yet, but follow it. Even if you don't know what you want to do when you graduate, I, I taught for many years a senior level culminating course and I will tell you the students would come into my office and say, I just don't know what I want to do yet with my life. I'm a senior. I'm graduating. What am I going to do? I don't know. And I would just say, just keep following your passion. You'll find it. it. It will turn into something that you will be really fulfilling. I know many of you, because you're in such a, a specific, amazing major in natural resources, have a passion in that area. And so what is that specific passion? Just continue to follow it. You may start out with your first job that you may think, oh, this isn't exactly what I want to do, but you know what? Every single job, you'll have an opportunity to learn something incredibly valuable that you will learn along the way. My first job after I graduated from a, with a degree in biology was working as a psychiatric technician in the hospital, and I was like, the only reason I took the job, it was the highest paying job I could find right after I graduated, and I thought, I just need to make money. That was all I cared about at that point in time. And I, I was at that job for a year before I started graduate school, and it was an incredible experience. 
I hadn't even had a psychology course, I hate to tell you, during my undergraduate, and I still ended up in that job for a year. So I learned valuable things. So each job along the way is just going to be a wonderful stepping stone. So look at each one as a lesson, and just remember they're part of the journey along the way. My second piece of advice is embrace the challenges and hurdles and failures. There will be failures, but look at each one of those as an opportunity to grow and to learn. And to embrace failures is just a chance to learn. And I can tell you, I've had several daughters that have had quite a few failures along the way, and it's been a real struggle. And each one of them, each failure has guided them in a path if they were willing to embrace and learn. Over the past two years, you've been living through an unprecedented time in history. You'll look back at this worldwide pandemic of 2019, and you will remember it very distinctly. This will be a landmark period of time in your life. The challenges that you've learned dealing with the pandemic, learning remotely, dealing with social isolation. I think as I've come out of the pandemic, I've realized what an impact the social isolation has been on all of us. And I haven't appreciated how dramatic it has been until we're coming through it. Changes in your daily patterns and your schedule, those are all very high stressors that you've been going through, but you've made it and we're coming out of it. And I hope that you will learn, you've, you've taken the flexibility that you've learned and continue to be resilient. Last and most important, the last thing that I would like to share with you is as you go along your journey in life, put people first. People are what are really important and most important. The people you meet along the way and those that are already a part of your life, that's what's meaningful and you'll carry with you throughout your life. You will be, meet wonderful people as you have through your college career who will be mentors for you, and you will have the opportunity to be mentors for many people along the way. It's a two-way endeavor where we work to support each other, build friendships, look for ways to appreciate each other, show gratitude and thankfulness. And whatever you do, don't forget your family, your friends and loved ones who've been here along the way with you, supporting you. Love, nurture, and show gratitude and thankfulness for your family and your support network. And finally, be stalwart, because after all, you are a ram, and it is, it is in your DNA. You're leaving here as a wiser, stronger person than when you started your journey, and I hope that you will continue to grow in wisdom and strength and experience, and you will forever be a ram. So Werner College of Natural Resources graduating class of 2021, it is now time for me to confer your degrees. So it is my sincere honor to formally declare, and I don't know, should they be standing for this? It doesn't say that, but... You know, do you feel like you want to be standing? Does this feel really formal? I feel like you should be standing. Please stand. <laughs> On behalf of and with the authority of the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System, I hereby confer, confer the Bachelor of Science degree on each of you together with all of the rights privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereunto. Congratulations. <laughs> now, the other thing that I am going to just add on is now that you officially have been awarded your degree, you can take your tassel and move it from the left, from the right to the left side. So it should be on the other side now. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Pedersen. Graduates, it's truly exciting to be able to come together today to celebrate. But before we invite you across the stage, we would ask, due to an overabundance of caution, that we refrain from shaking hands or making any physical contact. 
Please know that this bit of distance doesn't diminish our pride in everything you've accomplished or how special today truly is. Would department marshals please escort the graduates to the front of the stage to receive their diplomas? Would Dean Hayes and Dr. Rich Conant please come forward to congratulate their graduates? Ethan Barton Gates, Bachelor of Science, Watershed Science. Evan Jonathan Skye, Bachelor of Science, Watershed Science. Casey Helton Villers, Bachelor of Science, Watershed Science. Sonali M. Choksi, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Magna Cum Laude. Hunter R. Dowdle, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Haven Sinclair Furbush, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Nicholas James Godsey, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Pierce D. Graves, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Regan John Charles Harris, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. John Philip Jacobs, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. <laughs> Emily Ruth Jenkins, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. <laughs> Faith Hi Mary Kelly, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability, cum laude. Clarissa M. Koch, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. <laughs> Noah Shane Larson, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. <laughs> Natalie Elizabeth Namba, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability, cum laude. Christopher Lawrence Picone, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Wyatt Arthur Reynolds, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Mariam Ida Tijani, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability. Sarah Renee Viters, Bachelor of Science, Ecosystem Science and Sustainability, magna cum laude. Pete A. Zagorski, Bachelor of Science, Restoration Ecology. <laughs> Gabriela Shinyets, Bachelor of Science, Restoration Ecology. <laughs> Brady McGron, 
Bachelor of Science, Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. Gregory. Gregory J. Welsh, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. Tate Christian Steinbrenner, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. Maxwell Thomas Carryhard, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. Anthony Hilton, Bachelor of Science in Natural Resources Management. <laughs> Quentin J. Kleiner, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. <laughs> Daniel Beltran, Bachelor of Science in Natural Resources Management. Sabrina Nicole Butsky, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. Lauren McDowell Karn, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. Ellen Janet King, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management, cum laude. Charlotte Ann Lung, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. Christian John Hewlett, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. Keenan Burke Winger. Bachelor of, Sci Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Management. Yes. Kyle David Stark, Bachelor of Science, Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. Zachary Bear Ruther, Bachelor of Science, Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. John Barton Dring, Bachelor of Science, Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. <laughs> Colin Thomas Miller Stout, Bachelor of Science, Forestry. <laughs> Mariella Rose Rivera, Bachelor of Science, Forestry. Andrew Connor Larson, Bachelor of Science, Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. <laughs> Guy Todd Hutches, Bachelor of Science, Forest and Rangeland Stewardship. <laughs> Camden James Baker, Bachelor of Science, Forest and Rangeland Stewardship, summa cum laude. Ziyu Wang, Bachelor of Science, Geology. Harrison F. Quintanilla Navarro, Bachelor of Science, Geology. Aaron West Royball, Bachelor of Science, Geology. Cadison L. Wass, Bachelor of Science, Geology. <laughs> Heather Brianna Sheets, Bachelor of Science, Geology. <laughs> Melissa Lynn Daigle, Bachelor of Science, Geology. Sean Paxton McKinstry, Bachelor of Science, Geology. Sawyer D. Jones, Bachelor of Science, Geology.
Connor Stiles, Bachelor of Science, Geology. Cielo Valeria Martos, Bachelor of Science, Geology. <laughs> Kathleen Snelling, Bachelor of jo Science, Geology. Madison Jean Teeter, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Miranda Lillian Prince, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation Biology. Stephanie M. Steele, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Aspen Tees, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. Ryan Alec Black, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation, Biology. Samantha Face Herrick, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation, Biology. Brett M. Johnson, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. <laughs> Whitney Sierra Manashian, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. John Philip Bonner, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. Charlie Shabe, Michael Carpenter, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. Sean Gordon Ingram, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. John G. Starneri, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. Katie Jo Swantek, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. <laughs> Nicholas Robert again, again, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation, Biology. <laughs> Terry Isaiah Sandoval, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation, Biology. Jillian Krynock, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. <laughs> Thaney Hannah Dixon, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology, cum laude. <laughs> Rhett A. Lavender, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. <laughs> Brady James Dobler, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. <laughs> Colby Austin Struckman, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Jacqueline Rose Young, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. <laughs> Ryan Benjamin Mellon, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. <laughs> Lauren Rue, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation Biology, magna cum laude. Jordan Victoria Schwartz, 
Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Cassidy Ray Campbell, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation Biology. Megan Grace Lems, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Payson M. Cronin Smith, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Joseph A. Rademacher, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. <laughs> Gwendolyn Sarah Torres Shalebi, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. <laughs> Julia Alessandra Posey, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Shana Madalena Feinberg, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Holly Lauren Murphy, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology. Haley Reed Parrish, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, Conservation Biology. <laughs> Logan Robert Rowley, Bachelor of Science, Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology, magna cum laude. Eliza M. Post, Bachelor of Science, Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. <laughs> Haley S. Martin, Bachelor of Science, Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. <laughs> William David Beard, Bachelor of Science, Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Francis Piper Letts, Bachelor of Science, Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Patrick Thomas Dressler, Bachelor of Science, Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. Lena Ware, Bachelor of Science, Human Dimensions and Natural Resources. Dorothy E. Davis, Bachelor of Science, Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. <laughs> Brianne Diwani Laro, Bachelor of Science, Human Dimensions of Natural Resources. <laughs> Margaret Louise Lamana, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resource Tourism. Kip Andrew Holmes, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resources Tourism. Michael David Evitz, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resource Tourism. Benjamin R. Barrett, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resource Tourism. Yangshi Li, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resource Tourism. <laughs> Shenshi Wu, Bachelor of Science, Natural Resource Tourism. Please, 
Please join me in congratulating the Warner College graduates of 2021. Now, will alumnus Rob Novak please come forward to address the new alumni? Well, good evening. Very quickly before my remarks, I would just like to take a, a second. The staff and faculty have been recognized several times throughout the ceremony tonight, but we just heard Dr. Rocky Coleman read off the names of every uh, graduate coming across the stage as he has many, many times before. But after 42 years, Rocky Coleman is retiring after this semester. So let's give him a big round of applause. Well, congratulations, Warner's Rams, and welcome to being Warner alumni. 14 years ago, I was right where you are now, excited, exhausted, and full of swirling emotions around leaving school and getting into the real world. I found comfort once I realized I would still have my Warner Ram network out there in the real world, too. We often talk about Warner College's community, and you've heard about that tonight as well. It's an apt description that's difficult to quantify, but it's there. It's there because of everyone around you right now, everyone who came before you, and all of the students yet to come. And while that was true of the college before you arrived, it's because of you that that sense of community has continued. Hopefully, that feeling will extend beyond today because our community of, alum of alumni certainly extends beyond campus. Being a Warner College graduate truly means something in our respective fields. My first job out of school was here locally with Larimer County's Department of Natural Resources doing public outreach. And easily two-thirds of the people I worked with who had college degrees came from right here at CSU in the Warner College. My wider network around Colorado included countless Warner College alums in the natural resources fields. So during the ups and downs in your life and career, and they will come, keep that in mind. And keep in mind that we've still got your back and your classmates and fellow alums will too. You'll come across people who you won't ever have met before, but you'll be able to immediately relate to them and share stories about the atrium, Sherwood Forest, Field Camp, the Mountain Campus, and NR days. Take things as they come and keep being a Warner Ram at heart and you'll do great. Not only that, but Colorado State has your back too. We're proud of you and know that you'll go on to find your version of success. If you want to stay connected to the university, there's really no better way to do that than to join the Alumni Association. The Alumni Association team are some of my favorite people to work with here on campus. They truly love CSU and really care about keeping the alumni connected to the university. So I know that the pride, excitement, and nervousness you're feeling right now will fuel your success. Those feelings will eventually change. They'll deepen, mix with memories, and turn into nostalgia. As that happens, remember that this special place will always be your home. Like the trees in Sherwood Forest, you are rooted here. Enjoy today. You all deserve it. I'm proud to welcome you to the alumni family. Congratulations on a job well done, 
and go Rams! And at this time, I'd like to invite Dean John Hayes back to the podium to deliver our final remarks. Well, it's probably been about two years since I smiled as much as I did on the, on the uh, platform up here today. It was it's so won always so wonderful to uh, be able to congratulate you all as you're moving forward in your career. It's been a great evening. I know you're all anxious to move on to celebrations with friends, friends and family, so I'll be brief. I do want to address my closing remarks directly to our new graduates. Two years ago, last time I spoke to a group of new graduates, I shared that with them a recognition that they were leaving the university and entering into a world with lots of challenges and uncertainty. I look back at those words and I realize how at the time I scarcely understood how true those words would prove to be. That ceremony took place before most of us knew what a coronavirus was and it occurred at a time when most of us had rarely, if ever, worn a mask outside of a science lab. It was a time when the words social distancing and N95 meant little to us. Today, what was unimaginable two years ago is part of our daily re reality. So much has changed. And so I stand before you today wondering if there's anything that I can possibly say that has any meaning or value. I hope there is, but I fear perhaps not. But I will share some observations with you of things I've seen in my life in hopes that there may be something embedded in the, that that may be of some relevance to you. When I was growing up, in parts of the country, African Americans were not allowed to drink from the same drinking fountains, eat at the same lunch counters, or work in the same jobs as whites. Bald eagles, brown pelicans, peregrine falcons, and many other species were threatened with extinction because of widespread use of DDT. Air quality was a serious health risk in a number of US cities, and a river on Ohio was so polluted that it caught fire. When I graduated from college, there were no women serving in the U.S. Senate, and no woman had ever served on the U.S. Supreme Court. The idea of an African American serving as president or a multiracial woman serving as vice president was something that only happened in fictional books and movies. Much has changed since I graduated, and, and a lot of those changes have been positive. The challenges before you will certainly be different than those faced by my generation. And among, and many of those challenges are difficult to predict today. But despite that uncertainty, and despite these generational differences, I believe that many of the building blocks for positive change have remained constant through time. And that's why standing before you today, I don't feel pessimism or despair but I'm filled with a sense of optimism, confidence, and hope. I'm optimistic because I know that you've gained a solid foundation of knowledge and a quiver of tools that during your time here at CSU, and that that sets the stage for you to be successful in your careers. Indeed, many of the problems facing our communities, our nation, and our planet have critical technical elements and you're well positioned to contribute your knowledge to help solve those problems. But addressing the major issues face facing us will require much more than technical understanding. The solutions, the challenges that lie before us are entangled in a complex web of scientific understanding and social systems at the interface of science and society. And in many ways, the solutions will depend on relationships our relationships to one another, and our relationship to the world that we live in. And that awareness is another reason that I'm so optimistic about our future. More than any generation that's come before you, you're a group that's well poised to weave together the technical and the social, the personal and the interpersonal, 
to find creative solutions to vexing problems. You are a generation that embraces partnership and community like no other that I have ever seen. And you're a generation that's shown a commitment to strong community values like integrity, a passion for fairness and social justice, and a dedication to the truth and high ideals. Won't be easy, but regardless of the size of the task or the complexity of the solution, you are not a group that I would ever bet against. The passion, the creativity, the commitment, and the intellect that I've seen in you leaves me confident that you'll be amongst the people that dig in, roll up your sleeves, and make the world a better place for all of us and for future generations. That you'll be amongst those that will make those day-to-day, moment-to-moment efforts that are needed to transform our society and to build a more sustainable and more compassionate world. And so today, your new chapter begins. I wish you success and fulfillment as you travel forward toward your next milestone. Go forth, build on the knowledge and the values that you gained and refined during your time here, live successful lives, and make a positive impact on this amazing planet that we live on. Thank you so much for being part of the Warner, Warner College of Natural Resources and that all, for all that you have done to make our college an amazing place. We're so proud of you, of everything that you are, and all that you will become. Have a great day, and please keep in touch in the months and years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Hayes. Let us now please stand and join Ms. Fitzpatrick in singing the Colorado State alma mater. Congratulations again to our graduates, and thank you for all for joining us this afternoon. Families and guests, please remain seated as the platform party, faculty, and graduates exit. Graduates, please follow your department marshal back to the auxiliary gym. You can meet your guests outside at the Moby Arena North entrance. This concludes our ceremony.
Thank <laughs> you.